So the cool thing about today's car is it's actually from 1994. It's been sitting for a very long period of time. So the owner of this car is a veteran. He wanted me to clean it up for him. So I'm gonna be cleaning it up for free, but we're also gonna be taking care of the outside as well. And we're gonna hit it with the polisher, make this thing look like new again, and it's gonna shine like crazy. Now the start of my wash, I always rinse off the car with the pressure washer. It gets any of the initial loose stuff off the car, but I also like to hit the gas cap and also the inside of all the door frames because if you get it done with now, it gets all of that dirt out of the vehicle before you get to the interior later on. And plus any water that might splash in, it's very minimal and you're gonna get to it anyways later on. Now for all you foam cannon lovers out there, we're gonna blast the entire car with a thick layer of foam. And this is to help loosen up any remaining dirt that's stuck to the surface. This will help loosen it, drip it off the car now if it can, or just make it loosened up so that way when we hit it with the wash mitt later on, we can get all that dirt off the car more easily. Now for all those hard to reach spots, like inside these headlights, inside the emblems, or all those intricate grills, especially nowadays, I like to use my Fox Clean detailing brushes to get into all those little nooks and crannies, because one, they work really well at getting all that dirt out, but two, they also don't scratch the surface and they're really gentle on the paint as well. So if you guys wanna pick up a set, head on over to foxclean.com. It's my own personal brand. It helps make this channel possible. Go head on over there after this video and pick it up your set now. Now that we have the car all washed up, we're gonna be using the clay bar to clay the outside of the surface of the paint to remove any contaminants before we get to the polishing stage. And if you've never used a clay bar before, they're actually really easy to use. The soapy water is your lubricant for the surface and you're just gliding the clay with light pressure across the surface and feeling for any drag. The drag is the contaminant on the paint and you'll feel it slowly start to deteriorate and completely go away to the point where the clay bar slides smoothly again. That's when you know you've removed it all and this is a good thing to do before polishing because then your pad doesn't get saturated with all of that crap that's on the surface and it lets it do the work on the paint with removing scratches or any oxidation. I always get asked how long does it take to clay bar a car? It's actually pretty easy. It doesn't take very long at all. I would say it probably adds about 30 minutes for this specific truck to clay the entire surface. It's fairly quick. It doesn't take a ton of time, but it does make a world of difference if you're looking at protecting your paint.
Now with the car all cleaned up and the car underneath the fluorescent lights, you can see the level of oxidation on the surface. There's swirl marks, there's light scratching, but then the oxidation to the clear coat is gonna get completely cleaned up with a Chemical Guys VSS. I like to use this first because it's a great scratch and swirl remover that's a good one step polish and you can do one to two passes with a medium pad and knock out probably 95% of the scratches or swirls or oxidation for this specific car in particular. Now polishing technique is a whole separate video and if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments below. If you use a random orbital polisher it makes it really easy and almost foolproof to not burn through your clear coat and cause any sort of damage. It really helps with beginners learning and also even pros especially nowadays with some of these larger throw ones and the different compounds that you can use. You can usually get away with a random orbital for most of the job and still get it done fairly quickly. And these shots right here you can see on the left is nothing done to the paint and on the right is just a single pass with the orbital polisher with the VSS. I'm going to go ahead and follow up with the second pass which is obviously going to increase the clarity even more and get us about 95% of the way there. Now with the polishing part of this detail completely done, we're going to move to the inside of the vehicle with removing anything from the floors and then going straight into vacuuming the car. The good news with this one in particular, and you guys ask this question all the time, I honestly don't know why carpets are in a lot of cars nowadays, especially pickup trucks, but this one in particular has plastic floors, which is going to make it really easy to clean those up and make them look like new. So we're going to go ahead and start with vacuuming the bench and do the extraction phase on this bench itself to clean that up first before we clean up the floors. The product that I'm spraying onto the seats for the initial cleaning, it's called BioBreak. It's a powder that you mix into your sprayer with hot water. It does a really good job of being low foam, but also breaking down any of that dirt and grease and everything else that can get onto a surface of a fabric. To go along with the bio break, I'm using in my extractor, not only hot water, but also something called flex ice. It's a post rinse that helps neutralize the pH of the bio break. But using the pair of them, I found to be probably the best carpet cleaning solution that I use particularly. And it makes it not only low foaming, but it does a really good job at cleaning up the carpets with typically one to two passes compared to other products that I use. It's hard to see in some of these shots because of the low light, but you can tell pretty quickly that certain parts of the seats are like a darker blue, but once they're extracted, the blue of the interior really is starting to come to life in this car. And if anybody's interested, I have a surplus of chocolate milk available. Now these are probably the easiest floor mats I've ever done, minus just being complete WeatherTech floor mats and made out of plastic or rubber. But the carpet sections are fairly small and I'm just gonna vacuum those first, use the same carpet cleaner, flex ice that I spray onto the seats themselves to clean the rubber portions, but also the carpet sections of this floor mat.
And like I mentioned with these plastic floors, I'm using that all-purpose cleaner, my drill brush to get all that dirt off the surface and scrub that plastic, and then just wiping it clean with a microfiber towel. Like I mentioned, this is probably like the easiest floors I've ever done, and the difference before and after is truly awesome. Now, if you've watched for a while, this isn't the typical order that I go in, but because of the plastic floors, I didn't want to have a bunch of stuff being sprayed everywhere because it wasn't fabric. So that's why I did the seat bench first, especially to let it dry, and then I did the floors, and then now I'm doing the dashboard itself, which there is a little bit of overspray from the dashboard that got on the floor, but since it is plastic, it easily wipes up, and it just made sense for this specific truck. I saved my favorite step for last, which is protecting the paint with the sealant. And to be honest, after doing the interior and polishing the exterior, saving this for last is kind of like the icing on the cake for the detail. And for that, I'm using the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Liquid Wax. There's tons of these different types of sealants out there now, these spray-on waxes, whether the car is wet or dry or whatever, and they all pretty much work the same, to be honest. But I have several that I like to interchange, and for this one, I wanted to try out this one. And it did a really good job. It went on really easily as well and came off really easily. And it's gonna last several months for the owner, especially if he's not driving it a ton.
So you guys know that I do a lot of these nasty, super dirty details on the inside to making them look like new again. And this one is a little bit different because it is a 26 year old truck. So it's almost like a restoration. And I, I, I love doing these type of trucks and these type of details where you feel like you've taken something that was just weathered with time and bringing it back to life, bringing it back to new. And the owner was completely over the world with the end result. And he's excited to drive it, get it back on the road. And, you know, as a veteran, you know, I want to thank him for his service in the past and any other veterans out there. Thank you for your service as well. So thank you guys for being part of the Stop for Garage crew watching today's detail. And if you guys have any other videos that you guys want to see, let me know in the comments below. And if you aren't subscribed, smash that subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next detail. Bye guys.